up everybody it's nodak tinker back in the shop again working on the golf cart and i'm attempting to attach that spindle that i was talking about the last time and the only way that i can do that is with the motor well i found out the motor was shot so it was kind of a no-brainer so i started looking online and online i found a few guys who tried to cut these things in half and what a nightmare you know they said like two hours of cutting um, and they still couldn't quite get it right. One guy ended up having to cut the, the link off that he wanted. Well, I got myself a Sawzall and got a Diablo blade, or well, what's left of one, and I could only cut into it about a quarter inch. Um, once again, Diablo proves to be inferior. This is, don't get me wrong, this is tough stuff. This is layer after layer after layer of some sort of metal, and then there's copper running all throughout this thing. I mean, this is a two horsepower motor off of a, a easy go golf cart. This ain't no joke. Um, you know, it's nothing to laugh about, but it's Diablo's constantly claiming that they're El Numero Uno, and that is not true. Because I went down to my local hardware store yet again and got a Linux blade yet again, and the Linux blade is still going strong. And... I probably cannot do this with one hand. Maybe I can. Let's see what I got here. One, two, and three. Oh, give me one more. One more. Let's see what we got here. Uh, oh, not quite. I'm not quite cut all the way through. Oh, jeez. Maybe. Boom. So, if you're in a position where you would like to build a go-kart and there's an electric motor or golf cart, pardon me, and there's an electric motor on your golf cart and you find out that your motor shot and you have to get that shaft out, use Linux blades in a grinder because it's worth it. I'm just saying. I'm not sponsored by Linux in any way. I don't have any kind of anything to do with them, but that is a beefy, beefy axle. But that right there... Um, you can kind of see it right there. Here, I'll grab my flashlight. See those teeth in there? Well, they line up with, pardon the mess, that little sprocket down there. Ooh, I can't, yeah, you know what I mean, that one. So, I'm going to put this thing on a jack shaft. An axle here, and an axle there, or, or not an axle, but um, a bearing. And uh, I'm going to put a sprocket right in the middle, and that's how I'm going to drive this thing. Um, I also found out that that frame right there, which used to be on the snow dog slash thing, um, I ended up cutting it all up and salvaging it. And that is what I'm going to use for a subframe to put the motor on and that and probably a jack shaft with a belt in between just so I've got more variables for um, gearing up and gearing down. Also, I don't want to take that clutch off. I guess it's really not that hard, but that's a darn good clutch um, and there's nothing wrong with it. So call me a penny pincher, but I kind of want to just keep using it. But I guess we'll see what I can run into. Um, so it's coming along. It's just been slow progress because I wasn't a hundred percent sure on what I was going to do about that. But obviously now we have a solution. So I'm going to go find some bearings for this and, uh, see what I can put together for a sprocket. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on the best chain to use. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wing it. I'm probably going to start with a 50 and go up from there. On the flip side, I did say I was going to keep you informed. This is the back side of one of the doors. And this is the other side. This is just pallet wood, just kind of cleaned up. Um, and we've got vinegar. Sorry about the spinny spinny, but this is vinegar and um, steel wool sitting inside of a bucket. And these are the colors that I'm getting from this just dunk in the 
um, shims in the water just to kind of jostle around the steel wool. Um, that's one light brushing on just clean pine. That's one light brushing on one piece of pallet wood that has been outside for a bit. And that is Minwax Gray Stain. I think that's garbage. That's just my opinion. So that's what's coming. Uh, another one of these are going to get built. They're going to be the um, roller style. So up here on the top, right there and right there, are going to be um, attachment points with rollers on the top. And of course the door is going to be standing vertically. And then the door can roll back and forth like this. Uh, I, I don't remember what they're called. Barn style? Yeah, we'll call them barn style. Um, so there's that. What else? Oh, the stool. Um, kind of got mounted. I'm not 100% sure on that I like it or not, but um, it's where it is. And I went over... <laughs> I went over lacquer with polyurethane. Don't do that because you wind up with this white film. So once again, I have to re-sand everything, re-clean everything out, and possibly dig this stuff out. I don't know. I might just put white paint in there because I'm lazy. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Anyways, that is all that I've got for right now. I will keep you updated um, as soon as I find out about sprockets and such. Okay. This is after a couple of coats of the steel wool and vinegar. The other side is completely dry. And this is actually going to turn out really nice. When I set a piece of dark walnut right next to this, it's pretty darn close. You don't really get a full perspective, but this was as light as those pallet boards over there. Actually, less yellow, more white when we started. Um, well, I guess you just saw it a second ago. But yeah, so we're going to clear coat this, and it's going to get really dark. And it's going to look really pretty. Okay, I'll show you when I'm done.